We're here at Noman tonight um, for a very exciting evening ahead. Um, I'm extremely pleased to have these four amazing artists and presenters sitting here next to me right now. Um, I want to welcome everyone on stage. We have a packed house tonight, so this is extremely exciting. And then I also want to welcome anyone who is tuning in on live stream. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We have an awesome evening ahead with Blur, um, who's going to tell you all about kind of how to get into this industry, how to conduct yourself during an interview, what to put in your demo reel. It's a lot of awesome, practical information that hopefully you can all take on with you wherever you go. Um, definitely great for a budding artist. So this has been a long, uh, an event that we've been kind of planning for the past few months that started through a brief conversation that Jerome and I had um, on a stairway of Noman. So I'm really happy that it kind of came to this moment tonight. Um, I'm really pleased that they're here and that you're all here. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our artists. We have Jerome Donjon, the head of CG at Blur. Yeah. Hello. We have Monica Haley, the HR and recruiting manager at Blur. We have Warren Grubb, head of animation. And we have Brian Alvarez, who is a lead effects artist. So I'm going to let them get started. Um, I also want to mention that Blur was awesome enough to also bring with them two additional artists who are in a different part of Noman right now, conducting portfolio reviews with um, eight of our students. So I want to extend an enormous thank you to Blur for being so wonderful and bringing all these awesome um, voices here tonight and also contributing to our raffle. Cool? All right, I'm going to get off the stage and let them talk. So thank you, everyone. Well, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for coming. So, I mean, that's a lot of people. Um, thank you for your interest um, tonight. We're really happy to be here. Um, this event started, like Anna said, um, maybe three months ago. About three months ago, we, we came here and we, we saw a lot of demo reels from the, from the students. And, and it just inspired us to, uh, to do this event. I mean, we, we could have, we've done a few uh, making ofs um, of our projects over the years here. Um, but we wanted to do something a little different this time because um, we were here watching demo reels and why not take the opportunity to, um, I, don't, I don't know, it's, it's not a subject that I see covered uh, very much online or, or in uh, discussion. So we'll see if we can uh, keep your interest for two hours on something that's not necessarily <laughs> like the most <laughs> exciting uh, subject, but um, I think everybody can learn something tonight. Um, so, um, I'm the head of CG at Blur, and, and Monica is the head of HR. Um, just between the two of us, we, we probably watch about, what, 15, 20 demo reels? Like, I, I, I mean, I it depends a day. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> not more. Right. So there's a lot and a lot of mistakes that we see uh, happening all the time. I mean, we, we obviously see a lot of, of very inspiring, uh, a lot of very inspiring work. Um, but so, I think there's, there's just a few rules of things that you can do and you probably should not do uh, that we can share with you tonight because, because we, 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 like we said, we watch a lot of demo reels and... We talk about what's wrong. Right. <laughs> so. um, and we, we would like a better world <laughs> made of like shorter demo reels that are straight to the point. Um, so uh, before we start, I'm thinking maybe if... if, if if some of you are not really familiar with what Blur, uh, with what Blur has been doing over the years, um, I might just start with the Blur demo reel. Um, it's a, it was done a couple of years ago, but um, I think it's still it's still kind of current. You're gonna need sound on this.
Well, like I said, it's a couple years old, but um, maybe you, maybe throughout the night we'll we'll play a, a, a few of the the more recent projects that we've done over the past uh, the past year. Uh, before we get really started, I wanted to 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 give you a little tour of Blur. Uh, I know it's the it's the raffle prize, but um, uh, for those who don't get get picked, we had uh, we had someone, one of our CG supervisors, just do a little a little tour of. Um, of blur just for just for tonight so so you can see what the facility looks like This was Tim Miller, our, uh, our CEO, um, <laughs> at his desk. He's finishing a Deadpool that's coming out in a, in a few weeks. Um, all right, so um, let's just get started and, and, and talk about those demo reels. So um, what, is, what is a demo reel? And I know, I mean, most of you are students here, and so that's probably something that you're working really hard uh, on. Um, to get your first, uh, to get your foot in the industry, um, so we want to talk about like what the best way to present yourself because really, the demo reel, the way you're going to send it, and the way it's going to be received, um, this is this is your chance. You know, this is your one chance to convince us uh, that you are that you are right for the job, and and that we want to call you back and bring you in for an interview. Um, I know, like, so demo reels. Um, we we wanted to do a little, a little, a little skit <laughs> where we we showed the difference between what 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 we've all thought are demo reels, uh, how they're being received. You, I mean, I remember being a student just like you guys, and 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 sending my demo reel after I've worked so hard on it. I, I can't imagine, you know, my demo reel would would come into a company like Blur, and then people would just stop what they're doing. I'll get in the theater, you know, turn the lights down, crank the music up, put some popcorn, just look at, you know, the flying logos coming in. Um, and, then, and then a few years in, then I realized it's not how it's being looked at at all. Um, most of the time, the demo reels are, I mean, these days, almost nobody, uh, nobody sends, like, actual DVDs or physical media. It's all over the internet, so I mean, since we're, we're watching so many of them and we, we have so little time to, to, to do so, most of the time, a demo reel would be just a link. We popped up. Um, I sometimes tab 12 or 13 of them, just one after the other in my browser, and I just go fish through the demo reel to just see for something that, that, that I like. So this might sound this might sound like we're not spending the quality time that, that your reel deserves, and, and it might be so. It's just the reality of it is just that's how most, most companies uh, will look at it. So, so really what you need to do is make a splash, and you have very little time to, uh, to do so. Um, and so really what you need to think about, it's your demo oh reel God. is like you? your online dating profile. 
my God. Look at this. Worldwide. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys are all familiar with Tinder and, and how it works. No. You, you know, you know, you don't know? Why are you on it? <laughs> no. um, well, Tinder is this, uh, this application where you swipe left or right, depending on uh, whether you like it. See, so if you swipe uh, left, then that means you, you don't want it. And then, right, you're interested. Um, so this is, this is kind of how, how it's going to work. Um, this is kind of how it works for us. And I think it's, it's a good analogy. Uh, the other analogy is like, you know, if you go to a bar, that's, that's your, your best pickup line. That's, that, that's what you, uh, you know, you, you've prepared for it. You only have one shot. So that's, that's, that's what it is. So with, with, that, with that in mind, um, if, if you compare your demo reel to your, to your dating profile, um, well, the demo reel, all the work on it has to look very attractive. I mean, there's no going around it. It's got to look uh, really nice. You gotta be a tease, just a little, you know, you just show just a little bit, but you gotta, you gotta make us hope that there's more. Uh, but to get more, we gotta call you back. Um, so it's, it's actually really important because we see so many reels that are above five minutes long, and nobody, I can promise you, nobody in the industry has time to look at it if it's above 90 seconds. Um, Unless it's completely stellar and we have time to like go back because we have like time to spare, while we're looking for potential candidates, we will never spend more than 90 seconds on a on a reel, and and very very often much less than that. Um, so, I think you should all shoot for 30 seconds, um, and the first 30 seconds they're crucial because if there's nothing in there, I'm going to fish, you know, uh, throughout, and then if there's nothing, then I, we will probably move to the next tab. Um, so, to keep the, the, same, uh, the same analogy, um, this is, these are things that you don't do in your dating or, or in your social life. You should not do them in your demo reel either. Um, so don't put everything that you've ever done in your demo reel. We don't care. We just want to see the best you can do. Um, so don't work out some kind of clever way to have a build-up where you start with the very mediocre work and then it gets gradually better. Because if, if you start with the mediocre work, that's where the demo reel viewing is going to stop. Um, don't have annoying music taste, but I know it's easy to say, but um, this is actually not that, that, that big of a deal because I, I can probably count music. on my fingers the amount of times where I've actually listened to the music on a demo reel. Um, You've, you've seen during the little tour how Blur is set up. We all have desks in the middle of everybody, so um, we'll usually, you know, just, just get, the, get the, the quick time started. We'll look at it, but the music will never play a role in it. Um, uh, don't make it awkward. So, you know, when, when, when you start talking with someone, you don't, you don't go into the heavy stuff like, you know, politics and death and, you know, those, those kind of things that's just kind of, you know, like... It's not the best atmosphere just um, to, to get started. With your demo reel, it's kind of the same. You know, you want to keep it somewhat light. And unless, I mean, unless you're really, really dark and you're looking for, for a really dark job, like, then, then, then go at it. But, but otherwise, just, just try, to, try, to, try to keep it, um, just try to keep it light. And then when you go into a bar or on your first date, you don't come in, you know, twirl around in a, in a golden outfit and then just like, you know, shoot like flashlights into everybody. So please don't do that on your demo reel either with your name in gold letters, just kind of like twirling around with like and underline it with a big lens flare. Th these are things that will stop and will make fun of you just yeah. like around. Like, uh, um, we'll actually call people around. So, um, so I think if you keep those... If you keep all those in mind, um, I think your demo reel will, will, probably, uh, will probably be in good shape. Um, okay, so I'm just going to talk about I'm going to talk about the modeling reels and then the lighting reels, and then I'll I'll pass it on to Monica and Warren and Brian. Um, so all those different departments have different needs in term of in term of of, of reels, right? And so. 
I look at a lot of, uh, of a character, of character reels. Um, character reels are, are kind of a, of, a, of, a, of a weird thing because uh, it, it's almost preferable to have just a website, like a gallery uh, with images. Please, no flash, uh, no animation, no nothing that I, that I can't look at on my phone or, or, or on anything. Um, we don't have the patience to see like those images like just slowly fade in and then <laughs> um, I want to be able to just look at them very quickly because there's there's a lot to go through um, so you've seen blur demo reels our our character modelers if if you ever want to apply to blur our character modelers usually do the whole character so that includes modeling texturing and shading um, so in bigger studios this 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 will be split into three different three different departments, uh, but at Blur, it's all the same. So you gotta be able to show that you can do all of these things at a very high level. Um, so just, just, just so you know, as you're trying to see, well, what is it that, that will oppress uh, an employer? Um, for, in, in Blur's case, uh, we see a lot of very good modeling reels. There's a lot of people who can do incredible creatures in ZBrush. Um, but there's very few people who can actually do proper materials, proper shading, uh, and very high res, very nice textures. So if you're trying to like, you know, see where your career uh, could, could get a little boost, you'll be a lot more in demand if you're doing shading and, and, and textures than if you're just doing creature modeling. Um, you're welcome to do creature modeling if you're really good at it. Just know that the competition in this, this field is, is fierce, and there's a lot of very, very good um, uh, modeler. Um, if the best is to have your own website, obviously, but if you don't, it's okay. You can also you can you can put your 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 gallery on uh, on ArtStation, 3D Total. Like there's a lot of website uh, where we'll go regularly to to look for character modeler. Um, ArtStation is is a personal favorite of mine because you can really filter and say, okay, I want, just give me a whole gallery of just characters um, and I'll have a big page with like 200 thumbnails that I can really quickly uh, go through. Um, make sure your name and your contact is somewhere very close because um, we've missed people just because we can't find their contact. And, and you would think that if you go through the trouble of putting your image online, you would just put like a little watermark at the at the at the bottom, but just make it make it easy for us to uh, to contact you. Or at least your real name instead of a cool code name, because that makes it really <laughs> really hard to find people. Um, and then if you're if you want to take it to if you want to separate yourself from 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 the rest, uh, I'm going to show you some examples of like of successful reels uh, that we've had uh, recently, but. If you're doing characters, characters, there, there are our pride and joy at Blur. There are actors. So if you really want to get into the character modeling department of Blur, you got you to gotta show that you, you can not only do a model, but that you can, you can provide us with an actor. Like, so we need to see that you can, you can do attitude, that we can do, like, we want to see some personality in all those models. Uh, because you will have to not only model them, you'll have to do the facial anim uh, you won't have to do facial animation, but you'll probably have to do facial shapes. Uh, so there's a lot that goes on top of just, just the modeling. So if you have time, um, we'll always go for a, one nice simple stills of a, of a photoreal human character um, in some sort of uh, inspiring pose will always be better than just a long turntable where you go very slowly around, around the character in the T-pose. Um, so these are, and then, and then at the bottom I, I put like all the things that, that, that I usually look for uh, in priority. Humans are more difficult to, uh, to, to do than creatures. Creatures, I know they're fun, but you know, uh, creatures, they're, they're, they're not going to come under the same scrutiny as, as a human character. Um, same deal with, like, realistic. If you can do a very photoreal human skin, um, it speaks a little more than, than, than a stylized uh, character. Um, if, if you want to do stylized characters, that's fine, but I, I would really recommend that you put your, your reference right next to it. If you're working for a concept, always put that right next to the stylized because 
because once you get a job, you will not, we're not going to ask you to, con to do the concept design of your character and then take it to completion and model it. You will be given a, a, a concept design and you're going to have to match it. So if, if you really like stylized characters more than, uh, than, than realistic, that's fine, but just make sure we can see how, how you executed that, that concept design. Um, so that's, 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 these are kind of the rules for, for characters. Um, I'm just going to show you a, a, few, a few demo reels of people that, um, that, we've, that we've worked in uh, recently. So this one might be fam familiar. Um, Daniel was here last year, right? Um, and, uh, and he's worked for us um, on, on a commercial and um, on a couple projects. And we're... Background Hound, didn't he? Yeah. He did work on the Halo Anniversary Edition. Um, so this is what, what, what Daniel had to, uh, had to show. Um, I, I, I love that demo reel. And, and I'm usually only looking at mostly realistic characters, but... I think he did it right in that he always included the concept, and, and I think that's a good that's that's a good rule of thumb um, for you guys to uh, to follow. Um, Kai is our most recent hire in the character modeling department. Also, um, so see the the only thing that that kind of got him hired is this character. <laughs> um, uh, just looking at this. This is so blur. Uh, I mean, it's hard, you know, it's human. It's got robot parts. It's urine. <laughs> um, what was interesting about Kai uh, is that he starts, he starts with his, his best character so far, and then he only has three. The second one is also good, but it doesn't have textures, and I'll show you. Um, and, then, and then the last one is, is, is a little less uh, advanced than than the other two. What I thought was interesting was the progression. If you, if you take it backwards and you look at the progression between this character to that, to this, then, then you see that you know, his, his trajectory is, 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 is really interesting. And so um, Kai has been sitting with, with, our, uh, with our team and he's doing really good and he's, he's gonna. I just wanna add about Kai is that <clears throat> Kai brought this reel, it came up to me at SIGGRAPH had a blur shirt on, and he came up to me, and he had an iPad, and he showed it to me, and I was talking to a bunch of different people and actually trying to leave and do something else, and he pulled that up, and he just had that image, and it was, it, you know, he had a second um, for me to actually look at him and pay attention, and he got it with that, and, and the other stuff, yeah, not quite as spectacular, but for a, a he was a senior um, at Academy of Art and pulled that out and, and got me for a second and I stopped everything I was doing to get his, his information because um, because of a, a second of seeing that. So um, for all those characters, um, most of the people we've hired, we've hired them on the strength of one still. So if you need to focus on something, just work on one still, make it really, really good, and you might have a, you'll probably have a better chance than a lot of mediocre characters. Um, these are just a few people that we hired on the strength of one still. Um, Hassan has been working with us uh, remotely for, for about like year a, and a half. year and a half. Um, he actually had, on top of this soldier, he had like this very, this, I've always loved this, this, little, this, little, this little piece because it shows that he can do textures. It shows he can do really, really delicate uh, shaders. Um, and, and it's very simple, but it, it shows that he's got a good eye and he's got, he's got very good taste in, in, in making it exciting. Um, this character might not be the most, uh, the most polished and finished, but just the way he chose exactly where to focus on, I thought was really interesting. Um, and so he's been doing like amazing, amazing characters for us um, for, for a year and a half. Um, James Koo um, has left us, but he, he was our character modeling super, supervisor for a, for a long time. Um, he, he posted this on, on, at the time I think it was uh, CG Talk, um, and, and we, 
we saw it and we fell in love with this, with this image and we, we brought him in from the East Coast to, uh, for an interview and then he worked with us for a very long time. This, this is what I was talking about with, with characters that have attitude that, that, that can show emotion. Just in this still, he showed everything that we need. Um, this guy looks like he wants to work at Blizzard more than Blur, but, um, <laughs> but he's been working with us and we're very happy. Uh, <laughs> Um, again, he's got it all in this, uh, in this still. Uh, Zbinek is also just one still. Um, I mean, honestly, I look at this and I'm like, all right, you are, you know more <laughs> than I do. <laughs> uh, Etienne um, is working for us from, from England also uh, from time to time. Um, just great, just great face. Um, and then I'm just going to show you the first, so I'm just going to show you like the first minute or two of our, um, of, of one of our lead character modelers at Blur. He, he just assembled that and I, I just thought it was just, it was just cool. So, I mean, obviously you don't need to, to, to show that much to, to get in at Blur, but you know, this is, this is the kind of, this is the kind of people, uh, that you get to, uh, to work with, um, if you work with us, um. His demo reel is four and a half minutes, which you should not do. Anyway, uh, so I'm not going to go the full uh, thing. You're welcome to go uh, check his website. There's a lot of, of cool stuff like this. Um, so that's it for that's it for, for for characters. And I hope, like, if there's character models in the uh, in the room, I hope that that helps out. Um, really quickly, otherwise, uh, the the other type of um, the other types of um, of demo reels that, that that you can send. So. Props in hard surface, or um, um, this is this will be you know vehicles, uh, robots, and, and 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 all the props. Um, so just so you know, when you are sending your demo reel and you are looking for a position as a as a hard surface modeler, this is this is probably the hardest category to um, to to set yourself apart to because there's a lot. This is usually what people start with when they're when they're starting their career. They start to model stuff. Um, so if you want to be just a pure modeler, you're going to need to show something that's very advanced. Um, so to set, yourself, to set yourself apart from the competition here, I would really suggest just not only do an incredible model, but also spend some time with like some really nice textures and some really nice uh, shading because that, that, will, that will give you the edge over the, the competition. People who just model, um, it, it's a little hard for us to, uh, to use them. Um, and then just, you know, as a, as a rule, and, and that, that applies to, uh, that applies to, to pretty much every, uh, everything, but large silhouettes, you know, we want to see that you have a, a grasp of like large silhouettes and then small detail. Your sense of scale is really, really important. And that's usually something where you, we can see people with experience and, 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 and beginners. Um, and then, and then just the same as, as the, um, as the stylized stuff, always include your reference because if you're modeling from reference, it's really, uh, it's really interesting for us to be able to see how you're matching, uh, how you're matching all this. Um, okay, so I'll, these, these, these were, uh, 
these were people that we, that we also uh, hired just from one still. You show me this, okay, you're, you're in also. Um, this, this, I don't understand how, how you model this. Um, he's, got, he's got video tutorials on, uh, online. Uh, if you're interested, I can give you the, the, his name. His name is Chi Veng. Um, he does absolutely incredible stuff. Um, just with this, you're, you're in. Um, that's like a little close-up uh, part of, of the model. Uh, but see how the sense of scale is, is really incredible. He's got, he's got the, the, the big shape, and then, and then you zoom in, and you see the tiny little rivets, the tiny little detail, the decal. Um, this, is, this is beautiful. Um, if you're going to do a gun, you've got you to go all the way. And, 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 and Yaron just went all the way with this. Uh, this is also a very, very detailed uh, uh, model. And this is... Um, this is from Andrew. This is from Andrew Avakin. He's on. He's in. Um, he's in Ukraine. I mean, I'm sure he's he's watching this uh, tonight. <laughs> um, he's. This is the type of stuff um, he he loves to do. I mean, the, the the image is on his website. I think it's it's 5K. I mean, there's just you, you can zoom in. Um, and this just detail just keeps coming. Uh, it, it's just crazy. Um, so these are images, just one image, and, and, and those people got the job. Um, and I'll, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is, this is also from, from one of our uh, employees. Uh, Jin Ho has worked at Blur for about eight years, and he's been our, one of our main um, prop modelers, and he just recently shifted to the character modeling department because he just needed a, a new challenge. Um, but he's done a lot of cars, a lot of guns, and <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of swords. So this is this is um, this was a model that we received from uh, from ILM, but we had to uh, we had to adapt it to um, to to our pipeline. So you had to to, to retexture and reshade uh, a, a lot of elements. Um, so if that's the type of modeling you like to do, I really strongly suggest you uh, you also um, you also learn how to how to do nice materials. Um, Okay, and then um, the last one will be environment, um, environment set modeling. Um, usually at Blur, people who do set modeling also light it and then also move on to doing shots, um, rendering, and compositing. So, so these are like our true generalists. Um, so if... if we don't really have people who just do environments because um, so so our generalists usually really get to touch a lot of a, a lot of uh, steps in the pipeline, um, and um, so if you're applying for that position, um, these are the things that we're usually looking at: um, your sense of scale, and and I can't I can't emphasize that enough. Um, sense of scale in your model sense of scale in your textures, like there's, if there's something that looks off when you show it to somebody who's not good at CG, if something looks off, then there's something off. It might be the texture on the wall that's not the right, that's not the correct size. It might be the chair that's a little too big compared to like the size of the door. It might be anything. Uh, but really, this is, this is the one thing that we're really looking at and we're picking out like immediately from, from reels that we're not um, crazy about. Texturing and lighting is just as crucial as modeling, if not even more. Uh, modeling, you know, like I said, there's a lot of very good modelers uh, out there, uh, but people who can do very good lighting and very good textures are, are, are far fewer. So if you want to do, if you, if you do photo real stuff, then, you know, it's got to give us pause. We've got to be like, hey, is this a photo or is this, is this CG? Um, and then again, if you're going for stylized stuff, and, and you're uh, and, and this is fine, 
um, you need to include your reference because we need to see how you're matching all that. Um, photo real, well, if it looks right, then it's photo real. If it doesn't look right, it's not. Um, so it's pretty, um, it, it, it's a lot simpler. If you're going to work at Blur, you'll get to do both uh, photo real or, or stylized. And then I'll show you just a couple of, uh, of, of a couple of cool reels of people that we uh, that we uh, got with us recently. Beat, where are you, Beat? Are you here? He's probably working. No, he's still working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Beat just joined us uh, Two weeks last ago? week. Last yeah, week, a couple weeks. Week, yeah. Um, and this is this is what he showed. Uh, this is what he showed uh, us. Um, so I think he's got a nice sense of, of, of everything as a journalist. I think it's I think it was uh, it was great. Um, the sense of scale that I was talking about, like you have it, and and those, those birds, there, that's that's the way to that's the way to suggest uh, scale. Same with the atmosphere. Um, I think once you show that, um, I, we can trust him with a with a blur shot. Um, nice sense of scale, nice sense of uh, of shading and textures. I think he can only get millions of times better um, next to the to the people at Blur who've got a lot of experience. Um, this is another reel that does, that's, that's very short, See, a minute, a minute, 15 seconds. Um, this is somebody that we hired out of school, and he's, right now, he's our most sought after lead uh, at, at Blur. Um, he's been with us for three years, maybe, I would say. Um, so this is what he showed us just straight out of school, um, and, then, and then now he's, he's, he's a Blur rock star. But it doesn't have to be overly complicated. Doesn't have to be flashy. Like this sh sh shows such a good, you know, good sense of lighting and scale. Everything is everything is good. And then the more mediocre stuff goes at the end <laughs> of the reel. <laughs> um, these are images that will get you through the door um, without, without, you know, no question asked. Like, we'll, we'll bring you for an interview if you can show something like this. Um, I think this image is like 15K. Uh, it's just, it's from Andrew Avakin again. Um, he likes to just spend a lot of time on his images. Um, Another one, you look at this, is this, this photo, is this CG? I mean, honestly, I know the answer because I know the person who did it, but... Um, and you're showing it here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Olivier um, is not with us, unfortunately, but this is the type of stuff that he can do. Um, and then this is the demo reel of one of our Blur veterans. He's been with us for like maybe four or five years, um, and then... Um, again, it's breaking the rules because three minutes and 48 seconds, that's going to test our patience, but um, but this is the type of stuff that, that the blur journalists get to, uh, get to touch. And that's all I have. All right. Uh, I have nothing to show because I'm the non-artist here. Um, I'll keep it going in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was going to talk a little bit about, um, Jed kind of hinted, Jerome, we call him Jed, uh, kind of hinted at uh, the process and what you think happens with your you're real, the, the audience you're expecting, the very patient, thoughtful, um, uh, attentive 
HR recruiting person who pays attention, and then the reality, which is um, I, get all the, I get all the mails that come in from our jobs at blur.com. I see, I, I get tons of stuff from LinkedIn, some people that get my email directly and, and find me, and then people's friends. And um, when we're running ads, it can average uh, you know, 200 reels a day that come in. So, um, so I look at a lot of stuff. I usually come in in the morning, and there's a pile of them from people sending them late at night. Uh, and so I, I start the morning while I'm drinking my coffee, while people are coming up to me uh, and talking. And so I might open uh, an email, uh, if I get past the intro information there that says what you're looking for, what your software is, and then uh, anything else, um, a lot of times I, I start looking at it, and Savannah, who's from our production department, sits near me, can attest to, people come up, and I turn away. Um, and I might, if something catches my eye, turn back, or somebody talking to me might notice something, and then a lot of the time things happen, uh, life moves on and, and we move past it. So um, the, the note that you have a few seconds really um, to make an impact is a very accurate one. Um, I don't have a lot of time to sit and watch. If I watched every one of those three minute reels uh, on the days when we're, when we're getting a lot in, I wouldn't have time to do anything else um, and I have a lot of other things to do. So, um, so I was just want to give you some of my thoughts on, on things that when that stuff comes to me, um, I notice uh, sometimes I get a cover letter. I never have time to read a full formal open and attachment cover letter. I prefer a nice to the point email that says what you're looking for, where you're from, uh, and uh, why you're interested in Blur and what you, what you can do, uh, your software, your skills. Blur is a company that was based on the idea of um, using generalists. So there were just a few people in the beginning and they did everything. Uh, and it's really expanded in many ways on that, especially the departments uh, that Jed's talked about. Are, uh, we like to see that people have a specialty but also have other things that they can do. Our guys uh, get into a scene and maybe there's a problem and instead of kicking it back, we really like them to try to solve the problem. Uh, a lot of visual effects houses, uh, bigger companies are more segmented into individual roles and the, the pipeline is different. In ours, if you can fix your, your thing, you're going to be first pick on the next uh, project. So, um, so if you can put that in a cover letter or an email, um, especially just a little paragraph, uh, it's great. I will uh, be able to read it quickly and see what to do with this email, uh, with this this uh, resume. Um, if you've met me or someone else at Blur, uh, had a talk, someone's looked at your reel, some, you met someone at a party and they said, hey, you sound, you sound great, you should apply, please put that in that email. Um, that is the quickest way to, to actually get any of, anyone to pay attention is if they think, uh, if someone said you were good, someone referred you, or someone we can go to and say, hey, do you know this person? Um, uh, humor is okay, uh, but not too wacky. We are we like fun. We we are a little nervous about weird. So uh, <laughs> I've got to find someone to sit you next to, people to work with. Um, and so yeah, we like to laugh. We like to have fun. Too oddball uh, is a little bit hard for us to to know what to do with. Um, and I'm the one that has to go deal with it if it doesn't work out. So, uh, so at least at the beginning, you know, try to keep it uh, approachable. Um, res your resume, it should be one page at this point in your career. Um, there are very few uh, supervisors, maybe. There are a few pages. Most people who are, are coming out of school and looking for, you know, their first few jobs, um, it should be one page. Uh, spelling is important. <laughs> it, it, there's a tool, right? It's pretty easy. Uh, format, keep it so I can look at it so it's clean. Uh, it says what you do, what you did, uh, in a way that one sentence explains that you modeled, that you did the textures, all the things that you actually uh, know how to do. Uh, and tasteful in your design, not, we get some that uh, we call circus resumes because uh, they have every color 
under the sun and graphics and bubbles and all sorts of things. Uh, I, I really just want to read it and see what's there and know that you have, your artists, uh, that you have some taste. So, um, and again, on these, humor is, is fine, but really wacky. I don't know what to do with someone who says that their interests are boomerangs. It, it confuses me and it makes me, again, a little nervous. So, uh, um, and then uh, the real, just touching on what Jed said, make your real good. Uh, start out with your, put your best work on there. The thing that breaks my heart every time is I'll get a reel and I'll see some great stuff and I'll, I'll forward it on to Warren or Jed and I'll say, how about this one? And they'll go, it's great until the last 30 seconds. And then the work was old work or, or not great work and the fact that they don't know that this isn't good enough to be sending out at this point, that they've moved beyond this, makes me question their judgment. And so we get a lot of them that are the more recent work, beautiful, brilliant, you're, you're almost there and then you kill it with the last, uh, the last few shots that really should have been just cut off. So you saw a judge showed some that are pretty short or are stills. Um, that's fine. That's great. Just don't show us the stuff that, that, you, that isn't your best work. And if you need to ask a friend, a teacher, uh, you know, instructor, whatever, to look at it, do it, take the advice, edit it down. Um, you know what they said. They said you're only you're only as good as the worst shot on your demo reel. Yeah. Um, and it's true. Um, we've 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 had people that we, we we really liked until, and then we look at the last shot and we're like, well, but this is, this is somebody who just shows that he can't make the difference between a good shot and a bad shot. Um, the bad shots should not be on the reel, period. And there's um, no, I cannot talk them out of it. Once they see it, they can't unsee it. So uh, I try and try and try, especially when we really need people. And, uh, and it doesn't work with these guys. They, they, just, uh, they just won't go back after having seen it. So um, <clears throat> let's see. Don't, don't make us wait to get to the good stuff. Jed kind of mentioned the, the animated logos and the names and all that stuff. And some of them are really cool, but sometimes there'll be a, dramatic black screen and a big fade and this logo swooping in and by then I'm ready <laughs> to move on. I just want to get through the list. So, um, so you know, your name, uh, your contact information, whatever, let's get into it. Uh, your email and your resume are the place to really uh, present who you are outside of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jed mentioned for character modeling some of the sites that he likes to look at uh, and that a website is great. For your other reels, I really, my recommendation is do it on Vimeo. Send me a link. It always works. People try other sites. They spend a lot of time making their own sites. Half the time there's something happens and they don't work. Uh, and when we're going through a list, if it doesn't work, I'm moving on to the next one. Vimeo always works, and it works on phones. So, um, so these guys, when they're at the car wash or whatever they're doing, <laughs> finally looking at the reels I sent them, uh, can do it from anywhere. So, uh, and I ask the people sitting around me who hear me when I'm watching reels, and I get frustrated. I said, "What do you hear me complain the most about?" And and uh, one of the guys that sits near me says, "Font." Um, and I, I do get uh, kind of annoyed with these big, crazy fonts, or you can't read what they are. I just want to see what your name is. Um, <laughs> just clear, tasteful. Uh, those are those are main things for that. Um, when applying for the job, please provide all of the requested details. Read the read the job posting. Um, and sometimes I'll post for something. People, it'll say must have. 3D Studio Max experience or must be a U.S. citizen to be considered because a lot of times we don't have time to deal with a visa. Uh, and then people apply and they, have, they don't know Max at all or they live in, you're all here, but um, uh, maybe don't have a visa yet. And um, so just, just apply because that, that does get, uh, look, read the job description because it gets a little annoying. If it asks for rates, um, references, et cetera, Answer the question. Um, if you don't know what the rate is, you can give a, a ballpark or you can say, I'd like to discuss it. I'm, you know, entry level or I'm looking for mid-level, some, just something. Um, so uh, instead of leaving it blank, uh, this is a big one. Always include a breakdown. 
either on the reel where it says what you did, what part is yours, um, and the software you used, or give a separate sheet that lists it out. Because uh, a lot of times we get things, and uh, especially if it's a group project, or you were doing an internship somewhere, or you were at another company, we have no idea what you did and what someone else did. Uh, so especially if there are effects in it. And again, we're looking for generalists a lot. So we do like when people have a lot of stuff on there uh, in different um, disciplines, but we really want to know without having to guess and then call you back and ask for it, what you did and what you used for it. Um, let's see. Um, this, <laughs> I read this on someone else's uh, thing about recruiting. Is stick to one job application at a time. If we have job postings up on our website, don't send your resume for every job. On, don't submit for every job on the, the site. It all comes to me, and I see your name six times for every different job. And, uh, and so that just gets irritating. So, um, so, you know, think about what you do, what you do well, and what you want to do, and go for that. And, um, and you can put in your cover letter, I also am interested in this, that, or the other thing, but, um, but applying for everything from production assistant to character modeling supervisor isn't going to help uh, your cause. <laughs> So uh, this is one of mine. I have a LinkedIn page. Uh, I like being able to look people up, see if I know someone who knows you or has worked with you before, or even you know other Noman students, because uh, I'm connected with Daniel Co and, and Omar and all those people that came out of here and were great. And I will email them or text them or call them up and say, hey, do you know this guy? Um, and uh, what do you think of her? And so it, it's great for me to be able to see that. I also recommend that you put a, an actual picture of yourself on your LinkedIn page, not because we're looking for all the beautiful people, but we like to see that you can present well for an office. So we, in the end, we're, we're a bunch of artists, but it's an office. We have clients come in. Um, I want to see that you can look professional. Um, we don't dress up. This is, uh, this is how people come. Um, yeah, no, you look nice. but. Um, <laughs> But, um, so I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for your beauty, you know, your glamour shots or anything, but really just, again, taste, that you, you can come, you know how to behave in an adult situation. So, um, so the, the picture kind of helps just show that, that, that you can take a normal picture <laughs> and put it on your, your site. Um, let's see, uh, the interview. So if you get past me, uh, and I send you on and you actually get past one of these guys, which isn't easy either, uh, then we call you up and we bring you in for an interview. And they are not super formal generally uh, for us, uh, but there are a few things that, that we've noticed don't always happen that we want to pass along. Um, one is, is that people don't know what we do. So know what we do. Um, Judge showed our reel. It's on our website. Any company that you go to will have, a, have some indication of what they do. We get people that come to us and tell us how much they really like, you know, animated kids features. It's not Blur. I mean, they had the goldfish on there. That is such an anomaly for what happens at Blur that um, when people come and, and say that's their dream, uh, we say, why are you here then? Because we're not that. Um, and um, we want you to come and set your expectations appropriately. What are you coming for? You, you just graduated. You're interested in the character modeling department because everybody is because it looks really cool. Uh, coming in and expecting that you're going to get to model uh, the, the villain on Deadpool as soon as you get in there, it's not going to happen. And as, if you are talking to us like you expect that's going to happen in your interview, we're going to say this isn't going to work because this person has to work up to these things. Um, and that is Matthew, who's real. He showed you is the guy that gets to do <laughs> a lot of that stuff. So there, there are a whole bunch of years in, the, in between there. Um, so we're looking for people who are ready to put in the time, put in the effort, learn from us, uh, grow. And, and we ex we'd like to see that in the interview. Um, you uh, should be presentable, um, so casual again, but not dumpy. Um, we have one of our guys that came with us, and we got out of the car, and I said, he's wearing flip-flops. Um, don't wear flip-flops to your interview, um, you know, at least close to your shoes or something, you know, but just uh, presentable. When you, once you're working there, everybody wears flip-flops, um, but just on that one day. Also, don't wear a suit, because uh, our 
Tim Miller, our CEO, has been known to come into interviews and make fun of people wearing suits. So, um, so that happens. Uh, please be clean. We can smell people sometimes when they come in. That's never a good thing. And again, if I give you a job and I, I have to put you next to somebody, and if I think I'm going to have to have talk to you about that, I'm going to just avoid it in general uh, by not hiring you. So, um, so those are my uh, basic interview tips uh, for coming in. When you get there, make eye contact. Uh, we want to see that you can talk, that you can listen to questions, that you can hear what we're saying and actually answer the question, not just the answer that you practiced or what you think we want to hear, but the actual question we're asking. Uh, speak clearly so we can understand you. Um, show us that you're eager and excited to be there. We're not expecting students or, or uh, entry-level employees to be experts at anything. We want to see that you're interested, that you're eager to learn, that you have a good skill set. We can see that from your reel, and that's why you got in. We want to see your attitude toward going through what is not an easy process to come in and get started and takes a while uh, to get up to speed and be able to do cool shots, and we want to see, are these people up for the, the challenge of this? Um, and, uh, and then ask us questions about the work and the job. I'll follow up with compensation and stuff like that later, but when the interview goes then in that direction, we kind of lose interest a little bit there. Um, I've, got my, I've, got, I've got some, uh, some, do's, oh, got some do's and don'ts for, for the interview also. Um, yeah, I, was comparing the, I was comparing the demo reel to, to your first date. Well, the interview, like you're meeting the parents. Um, this, is, this is when you have to be presentable and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look like you can, you can um, be a part of the team. Um, so um, everything that, that Monica just, uh, just, just explained is, is all true. Uh, just a few things, if you, if you make it to an interview anywhere, I think it's always a good idea to just bring something to, for, to, to look at. Um, it happens very often that Monica will come and grab me in the middle of the day and be like, hey, you remember this guy that we're interviewing? He's right here, and I can't remember who it is. <laughs> um, and, and it's not because I have not looked at the reel. I mean, I, I have, but sometimes I just, it, we're looking at so many that sometimes I just, I just don't remember. So you bring your reel on an iPad, on a laptop, just something, something simple for us to, to look at, refresh my memory. Um, and it's always kind of a good icebreaker, you know, we can, oh, I remember this, and then, and then we, can, we can talk about it. If you come in, I've seen your reel, but then there's nothing to look at during the interview, it, it makes it a little bit more awkward. So I think, I think it's better for everybody around the table to just have something to look at. Um, if you can't bring an iPad or something, then just make sure it's available online. If it's on Vimeo, I mean, we're connected to the internet at Blur, um, so we can, we can go and, and, and look it up, and, and it's just the same. Uh, um, I mean, sometimes people will bring a breakdown that has just little screenshots, uh, and, and that's even enough to jog his memory of right. what he's looking at was, is a screen and then what you did, uh, so that kind of thing's helpful too. Know who the company is, well, obviously, but you would be surprised. Um, be yourself, just because we want, you know, if you're really weird, we want to, we want to see it right now um, and, and, and plan accordingly. Um, and then ask questions. It just, it, it's always such a good idea to just kind of come in and you just, you can prepare that beforehand, but just, you know, just, just ask two or three questions about Blur or wherever you're going to get your interview. It, it just shows that you've, you're showing interest and you're showing that, that, that you've done your homework and you're just not coming in just because, well, there's a job here, so I'm just, you know. Um, I mean, we understand, we're not stupid, we, we know how the job market works, but it's one thing that is always appreciated. If you, if, if you ask a question, you just, you, you score points. Um, the things you should not do, um, drop by unannounced, like ring the bell at Blur and be like, hey, can I talk to somebody because I, I, think, I, I think I can be a good character modeler. We won't let you in. Um, you gotta, you gotta, um, and, and believe me, a lot of people try. Um, this, you, you score negative points when you start to do things like that because you're showing bad judgment. Um, so same thing, don't come in, em, don't come empty-handed, like at the interview, have something. But, I mean, we've had people who come to the interview, they don't have a real online, they don't have a real with them, and, and they're like, oh yeah, well, I did that shot on this commercial, and then they start to like, 
Google I mean, they it. physically like <laughs> Google the commercial and then start to. Ah, I think it was there, and then and we're like, really? Like, the, <laughs> so you you can't waste people's time by by showing by showing up with your hands in your pockets, and and not prepare for this. Um, don't assume that you can connect to anybody's network and be like, hey, can I can I can I download something on your computer? No, you can't. If you bring a drive, we have security procedures for Marvel, Fox, whatever. We can't even plug in your drive into our computers. So, so make sure you have an iPad, a tablet, whatever, so that so that you don't need you can you can plug into the Wi-Fi. You cannot plug, physically plug on the machine. Um, don't wear a suit unless you actually like to wear a suit. Um, we want to know who you are, so so don't try to look you know different than what you're going to look like every day. And it's fine. Our CEO Tim Miller is is walking barefoot in the facility all day. Um, we we know weird. But we we work with the, them at least the interview. Right. <laughs> Please right. Just for Monica. Yeah. You know. But <laughs> then day two, that's fine. Um, don't oversell yourself. And this is, I, I know it's tempting, but, but we know. I mean, we, we have seen so many people. We have seen so many reels and, and employees. Don't, don't oversell yourself and try to, like, I've seen your reel. Don't tell me that you can do better. You, you can't because you have not. And, and if you could do better, then it would be on your reel. Uh, so don't, don't try to be, well, I just, need, I just need that one chance to do. Well, Spend the time and show us, uh, but don't don't come in uh, trying to uh, to be someone that you're you're not. This this next one, I mean, obviously, don't show somebody else's work. Um, this, I mean, we've seen like blatant plagiarism, but but also this goes with the breakdown. Like if if, if you if you worked at a facility, most probably you've worked on shots with a lot of other people, we need to know exactly what you've done. Don't try to pass the whole shot for you, uh, for you if, if, if you only did a part of it. We'll know it's a very small industry. And we know a lot of people from a lot of them. And then don't overstay your interview. Um, once we're done, you know, once you start to see us like kind of go like this, then that's, <laughs> that's your signal. Like, it, it, it's time. Um, we'll call you back, and, and, and you, you'll, you'll come back. But, but there's nothing worse than just like the person that just like, you know, feels good in the, that couch and starts to like, you and know, just leaves. wants to kind of <laughs> talk about stuff. So these, just, just be mindful of all these things uh, for your interview. Yeah, Warren, done? I'm done. All right. All right, Warren, Swap. take it away. Just down? move on. All right. Shuffle the chairs. <laughs> All right. Um, they covered a lot of stuff that is good advice. Uh, I am going to cover it from an animation perspective. So some of it will be very similar, uh, but with my little twist. Like, How many people here are working on their first reel right now? All right. So uh, that, that's good. Um, so I, I want to cover both. I mean, I, I'm going to cover it from sort of perspective of assuming that you've, that you've got a lot of work and you're just trying to find the best way to present yourself. And I'll also talk a little bit about um, what, uh, uh, what sort of animation stuff we're looking for on Reels. But, so I'm a head of animation. That means I, I see all the animation Reels and I have to talk to all the animation supervisors so I, I get their perspectives too. And that's very difficult when you're submitting your Reels. So it's very important to take all of these principles in mind because you know I have to please several people because especially at a place like Blur we we have short animation projects and it's sort of like casting you know we, we finish a project and then the anim soup talks to the other anim soup and says how did they do you know um, I'd like them on my show or I don't so I'm showing this to everybody because they'll probably make it through the studio so if one soup doesn't like your reel then it's like I have to become almost like a negotiator to say I see some promise here um, but, you know, basically what I'm getting at is, you know, whether you're starting out or whether you're just re refreshing your reel, there's a lot of stuff here that, that, that they've said and also hopefully that I'll say that I think can, uh, can help you really get a big advantage. And it's a lot of those fundamentals. Um, so I'll, I'll go through at the end and just show some reels of, like they did of recent people that were just hired so you can get an idea of, of what really gets your, your foot in the door. Um, but let me start off with little sketches I made. Oh, no. 
Oh. Uh, what kind of software do you have on here? That's all I need. Um, all right, so this theme of, of keeping it short. So in animation, it's very similar to what they've already said, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the thing of, you know, for animation, we re really only need to see a few principal things. And um, I know that it's really tempting. It's hard for me every time I make a reel because you, you've got those situations where you're like, well, you know, maybe the, the style that I had on this piece isn't quite what um, they're looking for, so maybe I'll put this other piece on there. Uh, or maybe you just feel like, you know, oh, three pieces isn't enough. I, I want to show them I have all this depth and experience. Or you just feel like, man, I know this piece maybe isn't the strongest, but I did a lot of work on it. it that's all stuff you should shove aside. You know, we, we don't, uh, on animation, I think we're a little bit more forgiving. I mean, we don't want to see more than a couple minutes, really. But, you know, if you have a piece that breathes, that's, that's okay. Um, but, you know, you do want to keep it short. I, I think that's, you know, advantageous. And it's one of the things that's so silly that we kill ourselves to try to make things longer when we shouldn't, and, and it only hurts us. Um, so on that topic, you know, the quality over quantity, um, there's a lot you can be said for that. So uh, again, you know, you just want to make sure that if you do show something weak, it actually damages you. So uh, what I would recommend for an animator is, you know, get, get one acting piece, all you need. I don't need to see three. And I know that we do a lot of experimentation. You know, maybe you're an 11 second club or something and you do these pieces. Just take the one that you like and, and finish it. Because what I see most of the time is I see a lot of people have good potential, but they, see, they do three pieces halfway, you know. They maybe put 10 to 20 hours in one piece and they get tired of it and move on. We, we don't need to see that. We need to see the one that works. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be a long thing. I'd rather see just a few really short shots that just, again, make me want to see more. Um, I, I always recommend just send something that's so short that you have to have me ask for more, which I do a lot. Monica would, would attest to that. Like, they might show something and I say, um, do they have anything else I can see? Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, and don't overextend yourself. Something that I see a lot in animation is that you, you know, you try to um, add extra stuff to it. Like, if you, if you aren't really able, like, you notice your piece isn't really focusing on the motion very well. Like, maybe you made the camera too wide or, or something, and you want to go in and, and put a camera move that tracks with it. If you're not good at cameras, just either get somebody to help you and do that or, or just don't do it, you know, just do a couple cuts to, to showcase the work. I mean... I see a lot of animators that just have it too wide and I just really can't get in there and see it. But then I see other people who um, go over the top and, and then you're outside of your real uh, area of expertise and then that's just gonna, it's just gonna hurt you in the end. Uh, keeping it simple. Um, you know, this, some of the reels the guys have already shown you tonight are, are very, you know, very much the formula I like, which is just a simple title card your shots as straight cuts with their original audio, no montage needed, and uh, just your breakdown on the reel, so you just have it maybe at the bottom so I don't have to look at a breakdown sheet and figure out you know, what's going on. Um, and and maybe, maybe an end card, but you know, honestly, nowadays, we're usually just looking at on a streaming service and I don't need to see credits and stuff rolling, so don't knock yourself out with that. Um, and keeping it cuts only, I think, allows you something that, that's really important. I th think it's probably overlooked a lot. And that allows you to juggle your edit. So um, I, I think you should always focus your, your reel to the person you're sending it to. So you're going to be recutting your reel every time you send it, um, if you do your homework and if you care about where you're looking. Um, when it's cuts only, you don't have any montage music or anything like that, then that's just a huge advantage. And it also comes up later in another topic I, I have. Um, and then your animation, you know, again, simple. Do not render it. You don't have to, I mean, it, I mean it's fine if you want to do this, but not at the expense of the quality of your work, you know. So if you're not a lighter, seen a similar kind of guy, then just do a play blast. You know, you can, you can do a play blast with maybe ambient occlusion on in Maya or something so you can see contacts for feet. Um, 
but you don't need to try to throw in lights and do you know a render that's subpar and just muddies up. You know, if you really want motion blur, like maybe you can get somebody to help do something really simple. But there's nothing wrong with just straight play blasts that that look good. Um, and then uh, going all out, that's something I see a lot too, where people try to sort of be more general and you know. It's fine if you're applying for a more advanced role that might be like supervision, because supervisors at, at Blur um, have to do a lot of um, editing, and, and we, we sort of mix in the different departments. And that's, you know, when I applied at Blur, mine was very highly produced. But for animation, there's no need for that. And I'm targeting people right now that are just looking more for, for animation positions. So in that situation, there's, there's not going to be any advantage to, to really doing that. And it can probably just hurt you. And it takes you away from the target, which is those extra hours you could have put into refining the, the motion you do have. Targeting. So uh, again, this is what I was saying and what they touched on. Do research on the company you're applying to. Well, one of the big problems we have at Blur, as you saw from our reel, is that we, we mix a lot between projects that are photo real and, and very stylized. And uh, it's, a, it's a difficult um, mix to be in. And I think it's really, really challenging for animators. Uh, even, you know, the people that are there, you know, we, we, we're on a show where you're just fully engrossed. You know, I was just supervising Deadpool and, and everything's got to be mixed with live action and looking photo real and then immediately go and work on something that is, you know, all super cartoony and, and applying all kinds of squash and stretch. So, um, when you do apply at Blur, you're going to want to put, a, you know, ideally a mix, but you've got to make sure that you're putting any sort of mocap realistic motion that you have on there if you have it. You know, I have people who sometimes I do request to see that and they'll say, well, I've done that, but it wasn't my favorite work. And it's like, well, you want to work at Blur, you're going to be doing that kind of work. So it's important that you understand that. And, and also I've had people who say, well, you know, you see my keyframe work. I can do mocap, and that, that is not true. I mean, it can be true, but it's not a given. So we've had a lot of people who spent a lot of years doing phenomenal keyframe work, and they just crumbled under trying to do the level of, of animation. And if you want to make my supervisors really angry, you start saying that it's easy. <laughs> because uh, we've, you know, like I said, we had people like, you know, when, when studios, um, we'd get these people who had phenomenal reels with 10, 15 years of experience, and we just had high expectations. You get them in, you just realize they don't have the eye and the temperament to be able to do that. So we're very critical of that realistic physical animation. Um, so it's really hard for me to get a full keyframe reel through um, my supervisors and get them in even for an interview. Um, and even if it's not your, you know, you know, if you, if you are phenomenal at that and you have something that, again, it's just one piece that, that shows that, then I can get your foot in the door. But, um, and then, you know, again, knowing the studio helps you a lot in the interviews. It shows that you're interested. It, 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 I've had people, like I said, where they might not have that reel that impresses my soups, but when you talk to somebody and you know that they know your work, they know Blur, and they want to do what you've done, then, um, you know, it can give you some confidence that when you get in there, you're going you're gonna to work to pick it up and, and learn really quickly. Um, you know, because, again, if you haven't done your research and you come in and you just want to do stylized keyframe all the time, you're not going to be happy, and we need to know that up front. Um, competence. So this is just about the actual presentation. And I think, you know, being animators, uh, actually, we're not too tough on weird. Weird's okay for us. Um, that, you have to take it with the territory. But uh, what I do see a lot with animators is, is, you know, we're very, most of us are very, very artsy, and, and a lot of them aren't as technical. So we do have to be technical in our animation at Blur, but that, it doesn't, it's not such a level that it should be that scary. But when you give in your reel, I mean, Make sure you're, you're, this is funny seeing their reels because everybody's so phenomenally detail oriented, but with animation, make sure you have clean, clear copies of your work. Make sure the resolutions between shots are matching. You know, you don't have a big black box around one shot and then full frame on the next one. Make sure the aspect ratios are correct. I see stuff that's all squashed and stretched. And please, for the love of God, 
don't shoot the video off a screen with your phone. I've, I've seen it. It happens. Just get help. Um, <laughs> and and it, it's something I see overlooked a lot, and especially with animators that are really, um, really experienced, but maybe not that tech savvy. Um, and you can get help. Just get somebody to, to you know, help you cut that reel together. Um, there's plenty of people that will help you. And at Blur, it's very important because we are, um, I mean, I feel like the animation department is, is pretty smooth and simple, but you do have to be expected to, if not fix some problems, at least work with a lead, maybe work with rigging to resolve a problem and then implement the fixes in your shots going forward. So if you can't even cut your reel together cleanly, then we know we're probably going to be holding your hand a lot and we just don't have time for that. Um, and then this is an area where I think students or people that are just pretty fresh out of school can actually have a big advantage over um, you know, people that have been in the industry a long time because they might be able to, to at least nail this part of it and show us that they've got this potential to learn. You know, we, I, I'm not going to lie, we, it's pretty hard to get into Blur without industry experience because we really have to hit the ground running on animation. You, you have a little bit of time to to pick up the software and tools, but um, you're expected to, to really carry your weight immediately. But we have hired people with very little experience, but a very good eye, and then a really good technical background, because when they get in the door, we see these people can really pick things up quickly. They can, they can put in the time talking to the leads, and, and they've been some of our best hires in the long run. So testing, this is a... Another thing I think a lot of people don't do because it's pretty scary, um, you know, just share it with friends, colleagues, professors, and this is where keeping it cuts only is going to help you a lot. You can pull shots out, you can move them around, because there's a lot of juxtaposition. When I critique reels, I'll, I'll be like, you know, just don't put these two shots together, separate them by three shots. It just, you know, it helps the pacing, it makes it feel like you've got more depth than when you see them right next to each other, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and if you've got that flexible reel, then you can, it's, it's not as, in, you know, it's not as scary. And then you can just pull something out. And I know it's, it's scary because not only is it sort of like you're being judged, you know, you're, you're also just afraid that you're going to have a whole lot of new work. But it's a, a lot better to do that and get torn down than send it to us and then burn it. Because, it, you know, I guess there might have been a time in my life when somebody submitted and then resubmitted and they got hired, but I can't remember it. Uh, that first impression is really important. Um, let's see. Uh, and yeah, and if you're really resourceful, then uh, yeah, maybe you can get somebody in the company. Like if, there's so many social contacts now, you get a lot of people just hitting me up on LinkedIn beforehand to be like, hey, I'm, I'm working on my reel. Um, you know, they're not applying, but they're just like, you want to take, can you take a look at it? Do you think it's worthwhile? And, you know, maybe I can't even look at it, but you've gotten a contact, and then maybe if you are applying and you've got other people that you've contacted, if you're really interested in the company, you know, they might be like, oof, you're going to have to fix this before you submit it because it's just not going to, you know, it's not going to cut it here. Um, so let me uh, show a couple reels. So... These are, uh, this is one person who just started, um, I don't need sound, um, but this, this reel, I, I wanted to show, A, just reels of people that have been recently hired, just so you get an idea of, of what does help you get in the door. Um, but also just, you know, it's not, uh, it's not something that um, has even all of the uh, exact things I'm asking for, but it's still, shows you know that you've got the value and uh, enough depth to to get that interview and uh, in this case uh, this person's working out phenomenally well he also came he's one where he mentioned a couple people that he knew that had uh, someone who had worked at blur before and then another friend of many friends at blur so that helped him quite a bit to get to the top of the, the list <laughs> Yeah, and this, it, there's no mocap on this reel. And uh, even with that, between, you know, showing the foundation skills, getting great references, 
this person had experience doing um, a lot of uh, previs stuff for third floor. And even though it's not animation, it shows that extra depth. So that's just something where uh, even if you aren't applying for, for something where this is going to be what you're doing at Blur, it's something that we see, hey, that gives you some extra edge that, um, that might give you added value here with us. Because you know, sometimes animators can do layout and uh, mix with different departments. So it's always good to have somebody that's got that flexibility. This is another one where uh, it was a referral and uh, you know, took, took a look at the, the reel. And uh, this one had a little bit more mix where you could see that they'd done some things that were, uh, had some mocap and some gamey s stuff in there. Um, been a lot of people from PSYOP recently. I'm actually not a huge fan of, of you know, when people have uh, too many of these just quick practice test things, um, just because I see so many of them, especially with the reuse rigs, but, you know, it's still valuable to do. It's, I'd rather have you guys use a, an off-the-shelf rig than spend a bunch of time rigging something your, yourself when it may not work as well and it just isn't a, a smart use of your time. So this last one I just showed is an example where I asked for a little bit more because it was an interesting reel, but I didn't see anything that um, really gave me a lot of confidence that he could jump into uh, repurposing, cleaning up mocap, and adding performance to mocap, that kind of stuff. So, you know, he'd done this work um, on some game cinematics, and it, it just showed, okay, you know, this, this person definitely has experience with processing mocap and all the challenges you, you get from that, and, and it was pretty clean, especially for game, game engine limitations. So, um, you know, even if you don't put something on your reel, don't think, oh, I may not be able to show this, just put your absolute best things on there and then hope that we say, hey, that one shot was really promising. Um, do you have anything else that can, can flesh it out? You know, on the opposite extreme, I would say, um, just be careful that, um, oh wow, this thing's still open back here. Oh, look at that. Uh, just be careful uh, that you give a clean demo reel that is, is in an area that's just accessible for that one thing. Something I see sometimes, which is unfortunate, is when people post on their channel and they have a lot of other videos on there and so they've sent me something that's very tailored for what I want to look at and then I'm going to start digging if I see other other movies in, in your channel and if I see really weak work it's like they said you know you're like oof um, you know if it's several years old maybe just take it down if it's several years old it's probably not going to bother me as much but you know it's just it's just um, muddying the waters you know it's just making you question like does this person uh, like an example I can give you is like they might have really strong um, mocap stuff and then I see some keyframe things they have on there and I'm like, ooh, it's, maybe it's best I sell that because if we had them in the studio and they had to go to a keyframe show, it might be an uncomfortable situation that didn't work out, but maybe they'd be stronger by then. So just in, your, you know, in, in the interest of yourself, you know, if something's not great, maybe hide it. You know, just <laughs> put these things out to us of, of what you really want us to see so that we don't end up finding things that you didn't intend for us to look at. Um, so again, just a recap of those general good practices. Um, two to three minutes at the max. I've got no problem with looking at something that's 30 seconds, but um, cuts only, no montage, no music. Um, don't spend any time on anything that isn't going to uh, really sell your animation. Put your breakdown on screen if it's necessary. You know, if you just did all the work, it's not really necessary. Um, and then that technically sound presentation so that we know that um, you've at least got, if, if not the talent, the resourcefulness to find somebody that will help you to put it together in a presentable way. Um, that's all I had. I, I'm sure you guys will probably have some, some Q&A because I, I, I didn't get in any specific, specifics of what kind of work you'd, you know, that we, we want to share if you want to ask about like, 
you know, the kind of acting pieces we see are our preferences for that, but um, we can get that afterward because I want to turn it over to Brian. No, let's do it again. I can go. <laughs> Is that the iPad Mega? Hello? Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Brian Alvarez. I'm a lead effects artist at Blur. Um, uh, Brandon Rizzo was supposed to be here, so I kind of had to fill in his shoes, which is very big shoes to fill. Um, so one of the things that a lot of people want to know is like how the effects department is. Um, it's very... Like other departments, like animation especially, you just jump in, you start working on your shots and stuff. So it's, it's, um, it's very fast, it's very quick. We don't have a lot of periods to R&D. Um, usually, um, uh, like you'll just get thrown into the water. Like, that's it. So you'll start with a shot, you know, you'll get a plate, and usually sometimes it's just animation, sometimes it's just a layout, um, sometimes it's a final comp shot, but, um, and then you'll import the assets, and from there, you're gonna have to only pick the things you need, you don't need a whole environment, you're gonna need the, the specific character or animation that you need. And then from there, you're gonna set up your simulations, um, your cache locations. Um, we use Max, um, all the effects plugins like FumeFX, uh, TP, uh, PFlow, and we've also used Houdini and RealFlow. Um, another thing that I see a lot of new people struggle when they first come in is the amount of responsibility they have to do. Um, I see a lot of people feel like they only need to just do a simulation and that's it. Um, uh, most of the time, you're going to have to be handling like rendering, um, setting up passes, and you're going to have to comp this stuff. So you're going to have to do a lot of things when you're an effects artist. Um, I know a lot of other studios aren't like that. Like you usually do your effects, um, you're handed off to Lighter, and then they'll comp it. Um, at Blur, you have a lot of responsibility as an effects artist, and sometimes it could be a lot and too much, but sometimes it's a little reinvigorating, it's exciting. And when you see all these shots and all these reels put together for our company, um, it's really rewarding. Uh, I was actually gonna show demo reels a second, but I'm gonna show some examples of like, of um, real life, but what we look for in FX reels. So, I'm gonna sound like a broken record player, like what everyone else said, but it's, you know, keep it simple. Um, don't focus on things that you're not applying for. If you're doing um, an effects reel, you're gonna to wanna to do things that uh, are natural phenomenons, whether it's like fire, smoke, magic. Um, I don't wanna see like a very complex transformer shot because for one, you're just one person, you're not a whole studio, so it's not gonna look as good as ILM. You're gonna wanna do something that's very simple and great. And that leads me to the next one, which is quality over quantity. Um, I'd rather see one amazing box explosion than 20 bad uh, building collapses, you know? It's, it's really that one piece of bad work that really kind of makes us close the web tab. Um, I've seen a lot of reels where they, they have a lot of good stuff, but then when they show that one bad thing at the end or something that they're not really focusing on, um, it really makes me question your judgment on, on whether or not you know what's good or w what your respons responsibility is as an effects artist. Um, uh, the next thing we'll be looking for is the actual effects, you know, um, scale. Um, I see a lot of effects like explosions and stuff like that that are just put on black because it looks better. But, you know, if it's supposed to be a nuclear explosion, put some visual landmarks like a building or a person. 
um, show what the scale is of the effect. If it's a candle flame or if it's a huge explosion, you know, I want to see something else with it to show the scale. Um, also, motion. Uh, sometimes I'll see like crazy camera movements, um, things that aren't related to that helps the effect. I'd rather just see a still camera, maybe some camera shake of an explo from an explosion, but I want to see the effect. I don't want to see crazy cameras or uh, something that's not related to the effect. And since most of the stuff is simulated, your motion is going to be inherited by whatever, whatever it is you're breaking or whatever is moving, whether it's like a gun or an, uh, a ship exploding. Um, so it's very important that, you know, the scale is correct because it will affect the motion of whatever you're simulating. Um, and finally, the look. Um, like I said, uh, a lot of us are going to have to comp and render our stuff, so you're going to want to look at real footage of, you know, fire and water, um, what they look like under different lighting conditions. Um, so all of these are very important when it comes to the effect, the scale, and the motion, and the look. Um, and like I said, always look at the real world. Um, like 10 years ago, YouTube wasn't around. We we're living in a great um, time where we can just watch anything online. So this, a lot of these um, things that happen in the world, like volcanoes and lava, where you don't really have access to, you can see it on YouTube. So always look at the real world. That is your best reference, and it can really help you um, make your reel that much better. Um, uh, another thing, too, um, is breakdowns. Um, sometimes we'll get people who've worked at other companies, and they'll have this one shot that was amazing, but then we'll see the same shot in another person's reel. <laughs> So it's very hard to know who, what you did. So it's always good to put in text or whether it's like a preview or um, a rendering by itself of what you did exactly. Because if you worked on the ILM shot with the robot breaking, um, how am I going to know what part of it you did? So, but I'm sure some of you are probably new. So you have that advantage of being able to do previews and stuff like that that you wouldn't have at a bigger company because you know they have stuff locked down and stuff so it's always good to have breakdowns always show uh, the techniques you used um, sometimes it doesn't even have to be from the same angle of the effect um, but yeah that always helps so these are the things we're looking for um, <laughs> um, so I took some clips of like live action stuff. None of this is um, <laughs> awesome. None of this is CG, but you know, when I look at like real life stuff, you know, it's I want to see stuff like this on reels, like stuff that's simple. Um, because if you do something complex, it's going to it's going to be very hard to make it as good as it can be. Um, we're always going to be having to do gun shooting, tanks shooting, explosions, um, impacts, debris. So these are all great examples of what you could put on your reel. This is uh, an example of what gets, we were talking about editing and don't put your bad work on there. In effects, we'll have these reels where people have a lot of great stuff and then they won't be that great at water, but they'll put their water shot on anyway. And Brian and Kirby, the head of the department, will kick, kick them back and I'll say, well, did you need them to do water? And they say, no, it just looks bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so edit. Yeah, so we're always gonna need people to do sparks um, I don't need to see the whole world exploding on your reel. It's, 
it's very often that if you're new, you're going to be given those shots anyways. So um, once you learn how to do these fundamental, simple things in life, um, you'll be able to do any effect. That would be simple. Um, I really love this slow motion fire. Who doesn't? So when you're when you're doing fire at Blur, you're gonna have to you know comp this stuff. So you're gonna have to look at how fire reacts to the lens of a camera. You're gonna get a lot of parts that are blown out. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you're you're always gonna have like glows and a lot of detail. Um, we're always going to have to do gunfire. Um, these are the kinds of things I want to see. Simple, yet it, it shows that you know how um, these things work. A lot of anticipation. So I have a lot of slow-mo stuff. I mean, we, we do do like matrix stuff sometimes. Um, it's, I wouldn't say very rare, but it's not very common. Um, I usually think it's good to look at slow-mo because you kind of get a sense of what kind of technique you should approach something um, and how, how something works, like a gun or uh, when something's being welded. Um, this is pretty crazy. And also, when, when you're doing these kind of simple stuff, like, you'll notice that, you know, there's a shell ejecting. Um, there's smoke and there's a flame in there that comes out. Um, there's smoke coming out of the barrel. There's these sparks coming out. They're bouncing off. It's causing this to combust, you know. It's just like these small little things that um, will help you reel that much better if you take a simple, <laughs> <laughs> if you take a simple approach. Um, someone showed me this and they wanted me to show it, but I, th I think it's okay. It's like <laughs> a Warner Brothers movie kind of collapse. I mean, this is silly. I mean, it's ridiculous. But, you know, if you just take something simple to collapse, um, there's a lot of things going on with something so simple. I mean, you have the charge from here that makes the leg break. You can see the, this post starts collapsing and probably the bottom is broken off. And then it starts bending and then the parts that aren't jointed really well kind of fall off. And then you have the smoke from the explosion and the impact. So there's a lot of elements that go into such a simple little kind of thing. And I mean, sometimes our, a lot of our shots are really quick and fast, but there's a lot of these little details that we put in there to make it feel like atmospheric and um, um, enhance the shots that the lighters and animators do. Uh, I thought this is a shameless plug for CNN. Um, so this is a pipe bomb cooker bomb. Yeah, pressure cooker bomb. So it's hard to tell how big this is, but this post is probably the height of a person. So this very small little thing causes this huge combustion. So there's a lot of elements here. I mean, there's the, the initial um, explosion. There's kind of like a shockwave effect. You can see it distorting the background. Um, there's a shock wave on the, on the ground from dirt. There's pieces flying from the thing that exploded. It's, probably, it's breaking this wall right here. Pieces are coming out of it. And then when you watch it real time, you know, it's very hard to see those details, but sometimes you have to put them in there. Um, I think that all of them. 
Oh, here's a nuclear explosion. So again, there's, there's really nothing to show scale of this because it's by itself. But if you were to put like a building here to show how tall this is, then I'll know, oh, okay, this explosion is moving at the right scale. Um, and this would be com probably composed of different elements like the main plume, the shock wave on the ground. Um, these things on the side might be considered a mistake, but it does happen. Um, sometimes I ha what happens in real life does not mean that you have to put in CG because sometimes it might not look right or it'll make the shot look weird. So there's some things that you shouldn't always do. Um, but it helps give you a good direction on, on where to start. Um, I think this is the whole thing. I'm not going to show that one. All right, so there's some good reference. Um, so here's some examples of some demo reels of people that currently exist there. These are actually some of the reels I sent to Blur. Um, uh, I'll, just, I'll show his first. Actually, um, he has some Blur stuff on here already, but he didn't have one without it. <coughs> So this is probably more of a criticism, but I don't think this is the best shot he could have put here, but um, it shows that um, these characters are breaking through the window and he took in consideration each one as a single pane of glass, so he broke them individually and not all at once. Um, let's get this one because it's from Blur. Um, <clears throat> So when I see something like this where he actually shows of him removing the wire and adding these elements and comping, this is already a big plus. Um, this is very well integrated into a live action play, which we don't do uh, most of the time, but it, it's just showing me that he's able to integrate something into a shot. You know, there's nothing there. And now it becomes a whole different kind of feel to it because he has smoke on him. Mm, these are pretty interesting. These are more, probably a little bit more stylized. But again, this is showing, you know, he has a good sense of, of lighting and compositing. You know, like nebulas have like this very bright area to have a fall off of, of black and color, which is pretty nice. And this one's like more of like magic y kind of uh, plasma look, which is really cool. We do that a lot. Um, and again, here's that shot where, you know, again, he's, he's showing his comping abilities and being, being able to integrate these things uh, with a character. Flying logo. Oh, this is blur work. Um, so this is really cool. So. You know, there was barely anything on his face and around him, and now it's like he becomes even more menacing because he has all the smoke. And some cool fire. And, and one thing that I like about this that a lot of people don't pay attention to is you'll notice that there is some sort of distortion over the whole image. And that's because, you know, when you look at heat, it, it distorts the, the air around it. So you're, this, just that kind of attention to detail is, is really what elevates this uh, above everyone else. Obviously, the heat distortion itself is not going to make the effect look better, but um, it's just those little details on something that's, that's working really well um, better. <clears throat> this is really impressive, too. So a lot of a lot of comping ability. Uh, another thing that I notice that a lot of new people struggle with is is they will you know focus on this one preview of a certain effect and just keep looking at it day after day after day, making new iterations after iterations. 
Um, that's actually a really bad thing. Um, you're going to want to take even your first iteration, even if it's kind of bad, you want to put it in the context. You know, start rendering out passes for it. Start putting in, in, in um, over the plate and composite it. Because when you look at it in context, you might have other notes about it that you wouldn't have, not have seen if you saw it by itself. So it's always good when working in effects at Blur to, you know, get through the whole workflow first, see what it looks like in context, and then um, make a judgment on whether or not um, you need to change anything. Uh, the second reel, um, we call him Victor. Um, some really good stuff in here. A lot of good atmospherics. A good sense of scale. Now this kind of stuff, I mean, obviously doesn't exist in real life, but um, he's able to integrate it well with the character, the live action plate. And you can see there's many elements going on. He has one on the ground, the snow kind of going around her. And then he has different elements of when it explodes out and then when it comes off the sword. So this is not all one simulation and that's how um, it should be approached uh, at Blur. Like a lot of these are individual elements that get rendered out. Because if it was all one element, now you wouldn't have the luxury of changing the individual one. You'd have to start the whole sim all over again. So you want to break out your passes break out your elements. So this is great, he's showing all the elements, the different lighting passes to give him some flexibility and comp to relight it. So one thing I like about this is that it's really showing how big this is. I mean, this stuff, this is very large. I mean, look how slow the smoke is going. And he even put particles in the foreground to kind of give it some depth. Um, so this is just great, you know, it's giving me a sense of scale. Again, he has RGB passes to relight it. Um, we used to do this kind of stuff, the RGB pass, but recently we started using one of V-Ray's tools which uses V-Ray lights and ever since we've been using that to light all our volumetrics. So he's showing some comping ability by putting a flare. So this is pretty cool. So he's showing all his elements, like the geometry, the volumetrics. I think he, he could have left that one out, but <laughs> um, the first half was great. Um, and here's a third person we hired. Um, this is using some Houdini, which you just implemented into our pipeline. Um, so there's some really great stuff in here. Again, he's showing, he's showing, you know, what it looks like, the BD pass, everything together, and then he goes into um, a preview version of it, the mesh. Uh, this is probably not something I would recommend for like students to do because you don't really have the resources to do this kind of thing, but if you can make it look this great, then by all means. 
So this is really cool showing the different passes of the water. Um, one thing I liked about this is when he goes into the breakdown, he kind of showed the technique he used. Um, it's really cool. <laughs> so there's a lot of really impressive stuff in here. Again, most of these are, you know, very simple things like this house exploding. I mean, he went above and beyond and did like a whole house, but um, it's pretty impressive stuff. So, again, to reiter reiterate what I said, you know, if you don't have the capability and resources to do these advanced simulations or stuff like that, you know, just keep it simple. I'd rather see like one great effect than 10 bad ones. Um, don't focus on things that aren't related to the effects. If you can, if you're able to light the environment and the effect with it and comp all that, then that's just an added plus and a way to stand out. Um, so, yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Good. All right, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, it is now time to open it up for the Q&A portion of the night. So if you're here on stage, just raise your hand and I'll walk the mic over to you. If you're watching via live stream, we invite you to ask any questions you have um, over Twitter with the hashtag Nomen. And we'll be sure to get to as many as we can um, before we end the night. And then after the Q&A, we'll do our raffle. We have a, a few shirts to give away from Blur as well as the studio tour. Cool? All right, let's start with questions on stage. Does anyone have anything they want to throw out there? If not, I'm going to pull from Twitter. All right, cool. Uh, thank you for your uh, lecture today. So I have a question. Uh, does your company hire uh, designers? So I see uh, design reel on your website. but. But I think I, they are considered uh, motion graphics, uh, probably for uh, commercials. So does your company hire uh, other uh, designers? So uh, that is my question. Then, uh, so uh, what, is, uh, what kind of designers uh, does your company hire? So that is uh, my one, uh, first question. The second question is, if so, uh, what kind of uh, design work uh, do you want to see uh, on the demo reel? So when you say design, do you mean like motion graphics or do you, do you mean concept design? Uh, so so uh, that is uh, my one question. So what kind of designer does your company hire? Could, the could graphics hire. Real, that's up there. Motion graphics? There's a, there's a, there's a de from the design department, there's a real one. So the, the blur is kind of split into two different, two different families, we'll say. We have the animation. Uh, the animation and the 3D department, which is, which is where we all come from. And then we also have a, a, a smaller subset that, that's doing motion graphics. Um, they're, they're much smaller. So Blur is about, we're about 100 people now. 120. 120. Um, but uh, the, the motion graphics department is about four or five people. Uh, so it's much smaller. Um, they, they do a lot of broadcast stuff and a lot of, uh, um, I, I think if you go to the Blur website, uh, blur.com, uh, there's, there's all the, jo the job posting uh, are there. There's also a separate demo reel for the motion graphic uh, group um, that you can check out and see if that's something that you're, that you're interested in. Um, they, they do have a, a few f freelancers that they work with when they get busy, but it is a very small group of people that they've worked with for a long time. So we don't have as we don't have very many openings uh, come up in that department occasionally, but not very many. 
So, so basically, so uh, you are hiring uh, motion graphic designers than uh, concept designers. Concept designers will 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 use concept designers um, on on everything we do, uh, but we don't have we don't have a, a concept design department uh, on staff. Uh, so we'll use a lot of freelancers. Um, so if you're interested in, in in working with us, then you can you can send all your best uh, your, your best concepts to uh, jobs at brill.com, um, and for this we. It's very. Um, it will be very specific to a job that that we're looking for because obviously, I mean, you've seen you've seen all the different styles on the Blur demo reel. Uh, sometimes very stylized. We've done some goldfish commercials, but then sometimes very realistic, very gory. Um, a, lo a lot of the concept designers that we that we that we work with are, are more comfortable into a style than another. Um, so depending on the on the projects that we're working on uh, at the time. We'll, we'll probably need, but but we're constantly looking for new concept designers. Like this, this is it, it's always great to see some 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 new work. And we maintain so a database, and when we have a project, the director on that project might say, uh, if it's a Star Wars type piece, I need somebody who does great <coughs> concepts, like the inside of a ship. Uh, and so we maintain a database, and we put notes in there, different you know entries for for different artists and their information, and then tag it uh, basically with the different styles, so that we can sort and give them a list of uh, people that we're aware of that we think look good in that style. So when your reel comes in, uh, if it if it looks or your pieces come in, looks like great stuff, we forward it along, even if we don't need it then, and we put it in this list to pass around to the directors as needed. So uh, uh, can I send a, a link to my <coughs> demo reel? So uh, do you think I should focus on uh, either motion graphics or uh, concept design, or uh, can be both? It's, these are two completely different jobs. Well, okay, uh, so. Motion graphics and concept design, they're, they're completely different. Oh, okay. uh, I would do different areas. reels for each, because the concept design would come to the 3D side, Motion graphics would be going to a different group of people. Okay. So um, for uh, concept design, so uh, do you want to see, uh, well, for example, Photoshop uh, hand painting or uh, a combination of a photo and a 3D model or uh, just a 3D model? Um, the 3D modeling does not really matter if you're looking for a job in, as a concept artist. Um, I, I think the, the, the job as a concept artist is probably it's probably closer to the, the character reels that we were that we were talking about at the beginning. I think the best is to show build a gallery website with really great stills. Just ditch all the ones that are not that are not uh, stellar. Uh, keep all the best ones and then make sure we can access them very quickly. Happy. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we're going to pull one now from Twitter. Um, as a self-taught 3D character artist without professional experience who lives outside the U.S., is it possible for me to get a job at Blur? It is. I mean, it is. It is. We'll, we'll probably we use character modelers from all over the all over the planet. Um, we'll probably have. Uh, we'll probably. Do a couple of, a couple of projects um, as a freelance artist. Um, character modeling has that advantage that it's very easy to 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 do off site. Um, if you're a compositor or if you're doing lighting, and and then it's it's a lot more uh, complicated. But but if you're a character modeler or or a prop modeler, uh, any kind of modeling is very easy to just you know just send through the internet. Like the files are not overly big. Um, and, and we do that with a lot of people. So yes, there's definitely hope if you... If uh, to come on site, though, is a different situation. Uh, if you don't have professional... There are a few different kinds of visas that we can get. Some of them uh, rely on professional celebrity, and some are... Uh, you need a certain amount of education uh, or equivalent experience in the industry. So if you don't have either... Um, it can make it very hard for us, make it impossible for us to bring them on site. But there are some positions that we can do uh, via remote 
and we do have people, like Jed said, all over the world working for us in character modeling, concept. Uh, we're starting, starting to talk about expanding that, but um, at the moment, those are the two departments that we can do via remote. Great, thank you. Here on stage. Hey guys, um, I had a question about do you hire somebody more on the technical side, uh, software programming background, scripting? Mm -hmm. As I have 15 years of that experience. I'm moving into digital media and I'm trying to figure out the paths to take, which would be in demand and, you know. Uh, we do. We have we have a whole department full of people who write tools and software and and help out with IT. Um, so if it's something that you're interested in, um, it will. I mean, I won't be the one who will be looking at your <laughs> your resume because I can't I can't tell. But we've got. Um, I mean, the the supervisors for from that department will will be happy to take a look. We have people that come uh, do highly technical people that come into two different places. One is in, directly into the pipeline group uh, to write tools. Most, uh, most of our pipeline people do have an art background, um, and went to art school and were interested and went that way. Um, and we have some that are computer science people. We also have some people who are artists in different departments that came into writing tools to make their personal lives easier uh, and their projects easier. And when we're looking, if we had two candidates that art-wise were the same and one could write tools, we'd go for the one that could write tools. Uh, so it, we, we love seeing on everybody's reel a little bit of Python. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, there are two different routes to, to go with that, but um, to go in, in another job and be the guy in that department or the woman in that department that specializes in tool writing, uh, you also have to be a very strong artist in that area. So, so, thank you for that. So you mentioned uh, Python, Mel scripting, maybe C++, things like that. Python is really not very much C++ happening. Um, at, at Blur, there we have one person who's offsite that, that does that for us, um, but it's Python. Uh, our tools are they're very, very Python focused <laughs> at this point. No. One last question. I want to make a transition to the creative side. I, I don't want to do whole, you know, scripting part. I've done that for so many years. Is there, a, is there something specific, maybe rigging or something that is more suited to somebody with more technical background or rigging, and then the creature TDs, uh, you know, uh, hair and cloth. Um, are those two departments? We actually have a lot of artists that cross uh, TDs uh, that cross between those two departments. They're very technical. Um, uh, FX is very technical too, but it's very artistic. It's it's both. It's very unusual combination of both. That's what I'm looking for. So you said rigging and cloth, and uh -huh. what was the third one? Uh, well, effects. Effects. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So our next uh, question from online is kind of piggyback uh, nicely off of the the previous one. What is the hiring process for international freelance artists who work remotely? Uh, well, you send in, it, it, everything comes in through the same uh, jobs at blur.com uh, or it, sometimes it comes through someone who knows someone. Uh, sometimes we have people, uh, our character modelers or people uh, like Brian who maybe are part of a, a community online or something and they, they get names that way. By the time they get to me, um, and uh, I pass them along, and the department heads pick them uh, to work on their project. For offsite international, it's a very simple uh, set of documents. Uh, one is an independent contractor agreement, um, and another is a tax form, <laughs> so we can pay them. Uh, they, we get them set up. Uh, they, for character modeling, don't need a lot of tools, uh, so. We give them an assignment, um, talk to them about how long it's going to take. They, they get involved with the team, set up milestones, um, and then they do the work and invoice us either at milestones or at the end of the project. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I actually kind of want to continue on with the next one just because it kind of is the same with international students. And um, if you could maybe expand on the importance of having a degree, and it might be nice to also talk about the importance of having a degree if you live here even, or versus just an awesome demo reel. 
So if you could maybe touch on both. Uh, for the visa, for the offsite, um, for an H-1B visa, which is uh, what we go for most often, the, the qual one of the qualifications is to have a degree in a related field uh, that you're going to be working in. Um, so, uh, so you might have a computer science degree and then apply for rigging and they don't quite match up. We have a little bit of uh, trouble there. Uh, but a digital arts degree, uh, and then you're coming into it. Um, if you don't have that, then we have to prove an equivalency of experience, uh, and that's just one of the basic requirements for an H-1B visa. For an O-1 visa, which is more of the celebrity, uh, industry celebrity type visa, uh, a degree is not required, but it's very difficult to prove that you're an expert in your field. So um, as far as artists, uh, here, local, uh, in the U.S., um, for artists, it doesn't matter if they have a degree or not. I mean, we, it, it I don't, I don't remember ever, ever asking you where they went to school when I look at a reel, no. you know, it's, that's, the reel yeah, if is you're what an you artist, are. You're yeah. a great artist, then you're a great artist. It all starts with the demo reel, like, if, if you can't pass that test, then, like, we're not really going to follow up on the rest. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, here on stage. Hey, so I just had a quick question. I was curious about like the writing, producing, maybe development side to your projects and possibly if it's like how to get involved in that, if that's, if there are opportunities there or that kind of side of things like, yeah. Uh, at Blur, they're divided into a couple different things. There's the writing, directing, and then producing is, uh, is yeah. very separate for us. You can talk about Writing, directing. Well, which which one would you be more be more interested in, the writing, directing, or the the producing part? Yeah, the uh, writing, directing. The writing. Um, I mean, we've been very fortunate over the years that um, Blur has been kind of specializing in in game cinematics. I mean, we we do a lot of different things, but game cinematics has been kind of our bread and butter over the years, and we've been very fortunate because it, it, our clients usually allow us a, a, a great degree of freedom. Uh, and usually come to us to kind of deliver a full project that involves you know, writing the script and directing it and then you know, shooting mocap with the actors that we choose and we direct the mocap and then we take it all the way to the final shots. Wow. Um, awesome. So, so we don't have a position for just a full-fledged writer. Uh, usually the way it works is that we have about four or five directors uh, in-house. Four. Four. Um, and, and all directors write their, 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 their own scripts. Um, they sometimes collaborate, they sometimes ask for help, or they sometimes, sometimes our clients come in with, with a script that they're really attached to and then we have to, uh, we, we have to execute and we can't write it all. Uh, but usually this is something that comes from the directing side of things, so if that's really something that you want to pursue, I would, I would suggest also, also looking into directing. Uh, because I don't, I don't see a full-time position for a writer uh, that would do just that. Um, cool. Yeah, just to get involved with like maybe assisting or something like that. Just if there's like a, a pipe, like a, a line to do that. But cool, awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. All right. Um, from Twitter, this is the animation question. For animators, do you want to see creature animations as well, or mostly humanoid? Also, do you accept people if they have zero mocap? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first, creature versus human. Um, we love to see both. We do a lot of creature animation at Blur. Um, it would probably be hard just to hire somebody on creatures alone because nobody, uh, usually like an animator on a show might get like, we, we sort of maybe give them a creature shot and it, just so that they have some variety. Um, but there's not really much time that we can just have somebody focusing on that. That said, it's, it's great to have. Um, creature animation is, is wonderful to show uh, something beyond just, uh, you know, basic human acting. Uh, ideally, you, of course, have both. And as far as hiring people with zero mocap, um, you know, it, it's pretty rare. It might happen. It, it, if, if we're freelancing on a show, we will. So we might have a show that's all keyframe, and if you're awesome at that, um, you know, we might bring you on for that, you know, whatever six, seven week period. 
Um, but it's harder for a staff position to have somebody who, unless they can come in at that and then show us that they've got the ability to expand into doing more realistic human, human uh, animation with mocap, uh, it's, it's not easy to get in there. Great. Thank you. Anyone here on stage? Um, in regards to, uh, I believe it was uh, Warren's advice to curate your, uh, like say a Vimeo channel, so after you've sent a rock solid uh, demo reel and you start digging more into the artist and seeing some other stuff that they might have not have directly submitted, does that also apply to the other areas like with uh, characters where you send a, a solid reel and then you go to their uh, art station where they have a little more uh, studies and um, experiments and things like that. Does that harm your chances uh, in any way? If it's atrocious, yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> and, and I mean, I, I exaggerate, but but not really. Um, I, I mean, in, in, anything that you attach to your name online, especially as an artist, you you gotta be. I mean, it's your name, it's your reputation. I think you don't want to harm it by by putting everything in, in anything. I mean, there's, we, we're, we've all done things that we're not really proud of, and, and I personally don't, like, try to not keep them online, um, because, you know, you, you never know. So, um, I think what's on ArtStation and on a personal website, you know, is, is, is the same as something that you submit. Um, I mean, obviously, you can have a little bit more, a little bit more on on your website, but I think you 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 really need to to show that you can tell the difference, uh, because it's really important for us to see that that you have the eye to be able to see the difference between what's really good and what's mediocre and what really like you know nobody is interested in uh, except maybe your family. Um, so anything that 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 a potential recruiter can can see, I think you should you should you know like take a take a close look at and and just filter it. I think it shows good judgment and it can't hurt you. Great. All right. Um, from Twitter, at Blur, do you have a dedicated position for a compositor, or do you compi combine compositing with the effects and lighting positions? Uh, yes and yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it depends on the work we have in the studio. Um, our scene assembly department, they're generalists. Um, they do lighting, um, lighting rendering, compositing, uh, hard surface modeling. And so they, they do composite their own shots. The effects department also uh, composites their effects. Um, so that, that's part of our regular uh, pipeline there for, we've been taking on a little bit of visual effects work um, and some, some live action integration stuff for commercials. And we have in the last year, for the first time, well, first time basically <laughs> opened up uh, real traditional compositing positions. So uh, we actually have a few of those open right now for senior compositors uh, for some projects coming up. Uh, the, on staff, we don't have a staff position currently for a, just a compositor. But we need some for the, for the next two term, months, so please send very, your wheel. Yeah. Great, yeah, thank very you. short term. <laughs> thank you guys all for coming. Brilliant presentation. I was refreshed to see the, the little character sketches, I think, in the animation discussion and wanted to ask at, at Blur are there also artists that are using traditional methods analog methods drawing with pencil and paper and ink and that sort of stuff or is it all digital uh, for production it's it's all digital um, I mean a lot of us draw and sketch but we don't have any jobs right now where we would integrate 2d I mean it, it'd be fun in the future but uh, yeah right now all the productions that we've been doing the last few years are just um, you know 3D animation with 2D principles, but <laughs> yeah, so I just sketch a lot for fun. Great. All right, here online, um, does Blur prefer, excuse me, does Blur prefer hiring project-based employees or full-time? 
We have a core staff, um, and we uh, we like having a, a good, solid staff. It, we tend to start with project hires, see how they go. If they become, if it becomes clear that they're a great fit, and we have an opening for staff position, uh, then then we do hire a lot from our freelance pool, our project hire pool. Um, Blur is very committed to uh, being able to take care of the staff members that are there, so we try not to bring on more staff than, than, we, can, than we can handle. Um, we don't like to let staff members go um, because of lack of work. So, uh, so those staff positions, uh, people tend to stay in them a very long time. We get a little bit of turnover. We have some positions open up. Uh, but we, and then we do tend to pick from our favorite project hires to go into those. So the best way to get in is project hire positions. There are a lot more project-based positions than staff positions. Cool. And then piggybacking off of that, are there any internship programs? Well, we have two Noman interns right now, um, and we've had a few in the last few years. Uh, it, we have occasionally have uh, one or two from another school. It really depends on the candidate. It's not uh, the type of program where we just say, okay, we're taking two, let's fill up these spots. We look and see. Uh, we actually this year thought, well, we'll pick one, and then there were two on there that we really liked um, especially, so we found a place to use them, so uh, so we don't always. Um, sometimes it doesn't make sense for us to have them. We don't have enough. Uh, we have worked just enough for our core staff, uh, so we don't have enough to do, or we don't have uh, supervisors with the time to put into uh, actually making sure interns are getting a good experience out of it and learning something. But we do it more now than we used to. Great. All right, we have time for a couple more. Hi, uh, this is kind of a general question, but um, as a modeler, how can I make the jobs of the other departments easier? Or what are some common pitfalls uh, from uh, transferring one, like one asset into, like let's say from modeling into the VFX department or the animation department and it not quite working out? How to QC so, his stuff so it's <laughs> good for the next to move down the pipeline. Best, you know, common pitfalls. For I, 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 I apologize. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear the question pretty clearly. Well, I, I, I think uh, basically what can a modeler do to make the other department's life easier? I know, I know for me something we face a lot in animation is, is efficiency and light models. Like we, we have a lot of modelers that are really great at making stuff look amazing at 5K. But, uh, you know, for me, I'm always looking, hey, you guys find any modelers that uh, can model at, like, game res? Because, <laughs> you know, we want assets that can scale. So I, I think if you're somebody who can, and can do those two extremes, I think you would be heralded at, at, at Blur. Because, like, we, we, we have things where we're like, okay, we got to have these crowd assets. We need to minimize the topology. And, and it's something most modelers don't want to do. I, I think if you're... If you plan ahead and you, you have it in mind from the start and you model that way, it should be easier to get back to that point. But that's, that's one of the things I see externally as a head of animation that we're always wrestling with is that efficiency in your modeling so that you can get it back to something that's easy for, for everybody to use. Um, and for effects, I mean, we're always dealing with like models just shoved into other models and stuff like that. So it's very common for us to get like get stuff like that. but it's not because these people like who are working with us are bad modelers, it's just because the time, you know, um, constraint and sometimes you won't even see that kind of thing happen, but um, usually for effects you want to have like an airtight model. Um, for characters, you're, we're not going to be working with high res unless it's like a really close up shot of the character. Uh, we're going to want low res of stuff. Um, but on our end, we'll usually take the bad models and usually convert them to our own collision stuff, but anything to help our life easier, it goes a long way. 
And I, th I think just asking is the biggest thing. I, Blur's still small enough where <clears throat> I love just when people will ask that. You know, I'm gonna. I, this model is going to have to be. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> gonna have to be used for effects. Is there anything I can do to prepare for that? Or in animation, like, I, hey, I, I saw this is gonna be a crowd scene. You know, is it? Shouldn't I be doing something a little differently than normal? So, I think that's clutch in, in a studio like ours is just to be asking those questions. It's usually a big, a big shock for the new character modelers at Blur, like the amount of technical stuff that they have to deal with. Um, getting, I mean, building beautiful model is a prerequisite, but, but you're, only, you're only halfway there once you've done your model and it's approved and we, we think it looks good. There's, there's a lot of people that you, you're gonna need to please after that, like the rigging department in particular, they're difficult to, they're hard to please. <laughs> Um, and then there's going to be a lot of, you know, you're going to have to go back and redo a lot of stuff just because it might look beautiful, but it doesn't deform well or it doesn't, it doesn't they can't animate it, they can't, they can't blow it up, and <laughs> God forbid. Um, so you, you're going to have to make sure that, that, that all, those, all those departments are, are, are happy. And, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of processes of QC where we have a lot of supervisors and leads like looking at the models all, all along the way. But I think the character modelers are, are, are under a lot of scrutiny uh, with their models. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm gonna pull one more from Twitter tonight. Um, for someone focused on hard surface and environments, would Blur want to see their animation and rigging of such things? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, and, and, and honestly, don't, don't don't buck down your reel with that because it, it would, I can only imagine it would be an inferior reel. Uh, these are two completely different positions. Uh, there are three different positions, like, uh, as a matter of fact. So if you want to animate, then, then animate and send your reel to Warren. If you want to do rigging, then that's all you need to uh, focus on because that's all you'll, you'll touch at Blur. Um, but if you want to do environments and, 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 and props and, and hard surface, then, then build your reel accordingly and then, and then, and then I'll look at it. But, um. Great. All right, I think we have time for just one more quick one here on stage. All right, one more. Okay, so I just wanted to clear up that if you're a generalist, then focusing on uh, the lighting aspects, environments, and well, there was one more thing, correct? Compositing. Compositing. All right, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> <That's easy>. Cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a specific name. It's, oh. uh, it's, it's a specific name. It's called Scene Assemblers. Right? At, at Blur, yeah. Yep. Uh, so they're called Scene Assemblers. I do the lighting and and all that stuff. We do sometimes post the ads though for um, generalist, 3D Studio Max, generalist or generalist position because some people, a lot of people don't recognize that term scene assembler because uh, not a lot of companies use it, I don't think. It's a fun gig. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get a big round of applause for our presenters. Thank, Thank you, you for, for being here. Thanks. Thank you. I know a lot of people in here are probably walking away with some really valuable information. So thanks all of you for giving your time. Um, I definitely, I should have said this in the beginning. I also want to thank Savannah. You don't see her, but she's over there. She was very responsive to all of my annoying emails. <laughs> and she played a big role in putting this together as well. So I definitely want to say thank you. Um, also to our reviewers who are in the back. I think I saw Darren Butler and maybe Peter Wildman is back there. Um, yeah, so thank you to both of them for giving their time, and Christian as well. Um, everyone's been so awesome. Um, before we like truly end the night, I'm gonna do the raffle. Um, I wanna thank the live stream people as well, sorry I should say that, thanks for tuning in. But we're gonna do the raffle here, so if you win, there's 10 blur shirts, that they're gonna mail you, well, one per winner, um, and then one studio tour of Blur. <laughs> so as you win, just raise your hand and the wonderful yeah, Crystal is gonna come that. and mark your ticket, and then you're gonna see her at the end of the night and she can take down any relevant information so that they can get you your shirt. 
um, or you know, get you going with your tour, which I believe has to happen either January 29th or February 5th at 11 a.m. Cool. All right. It's very specific. So, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Specific for us. This is a very exciting moment. Get out your tickets. Savannah found like a window in tracks. Which the is first crazy. winner oh. is 140335. It's me. 140335. We got a winner. Woo! <laughs> I think that's the next the winner is 140317. Nice. Whoa. You knew it. <laughs> This is like the Powerball. Yeah. <laughs> should get a job. Huh? You should put Pretty a job much in the there. same. Yeah. All right. The next yeah. winner is one four zero three four four. Yep, we got a winner. <laughs> They're all still here. This is great. Keep your hand up, please. Keep your hand up, please. Thank you. And our next winner. Is one four zero three two one? Oh, I'm making Crystal run all the way around. <laughs> one four zero three two one. Oh, <laughs> all right, we have four shirts. Six left. Let's do a little. Okay. One four zero three five seven. In the back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> One, four, zero, three, three, four. Nice. Up in the front over here. Man, that's so lucky. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's like a nice pool over there. I want to go with them to get the next Powerball. Got ticket. four more to go. One four zero three one nine. One four zero three one nine. <laughs> Up here. All right, bear with me. A few more. One four zero three two two. One four zero three two two. Oh, winner, cool. Yay. One four zero three three six. Congratulations. And the last blur t shirt. Goes to one four zero three four seven. Congratulations. <laughs> It'd be great if it was like Christian. All right, and last but definitely not least will be the winner of the tour of Blur. So I'm going to have Monica pick this one. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck together. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, okay. There. One four zero three five two. One four zero three five two right. landed a tour of blur. Congratulations. <laughs> cool. All right, everyone. Thank you for coming. Do you Thanks. want to say any last words, presenters? Thank you. Thank you for Thanks coming. For and thank you. You've been very uh, quiet and very uh, attentive. It's, uh, it's stayed nice. Stayed so you. long. <laughs> the presenters you. are saying their last words. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for coming out. Um, and remember that you can watch this on live stream. It will be up. So if you want to, I saw a few of you taking watch notes, you can watch again. Good night. I'm watch the whole thing tomorrow. <laughs>